coming up. Nathan Fillion joins Guardians of the Galaxy as Wonder Man. Iceland declares Christianity a public health hazard. Fresh off of SeaWorld victory, animal rights groups take aim at zoos, circuses, and maybe your pet. Dog dies from exhaustion after rescuing seven people from earthquake. Apple's nine-year iPhone juggernaut stops with the first sales decline. Mitsubishi has been cheating on fuel tests for 25 years. A German nuke plant is infected with computer viruses, or so the operator says. And more on this episode of What's. Hello there. Thank you for joining us once again. This is the Wide Open Talk Show for Wednesday, April 27th, 2016. I'm Donovan Edkisson, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host and good friend, Samuel Lewis. Hey, man. How's it going? What you been up to today? Going fantastic. I, I just opened up my Hearthstone expansion today, so the whispers of the old gods are running around in my ears right now telling me what kind of decks to build, but I haven't... <laughs> I haven't gotten around to that yet. I just opened the packs. So interesting ideas are popping up in here. Yeah, I actually started, uh, uh, I watched a few minutes of your Let's Play video this morning. And yeah, I have to agree with you. Um, whenever you go to open one of those packs and it does that kind of <laughs> sound. <and it's, laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh, um, appropriately disgusting. Let's put it that way. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and the one legendary I got of that, out of that pack was for a druid, and I thought, well, Donovan needs to be opening these, not me. But. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't get back into it, man, but, you know, maybe one day. Well, it's it's a good time to start because now a bunch of cards that you normally had to deal with and would have had to learn about don't have to deal with them anymore, right? That's so. true. It's It's somewhat like starting brand new, isn't it? A bit, yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's sort of what they're aiming with with this whole standard thing now, to where older cards will get rotated out. You can still use them in wild, but yeah, it's it's interesting, and especially for someone like you that's even more casual than I am, it it makes it makes it easier on people like you. So it's just I'd I'd say just give it a shot and at least log in so you can get your Cthulhu in those three free packs. It can't hurt you to do that. Yeah, that's true. I guess I do need to do that. Yeah, casual. Look up casual casual game player in the dictionary, and there's a picture of me, and the definition is a guy who plays the same video game about once or twice every six months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and another game that he will only play when his friend drags him along on it. Pretty much. That's it. <laughs> That is it. Well, this is a call-in show, and that number is 229-518-3525 if you want to call in during the show and give us your opinion on the stories that we're covering today. Um, and so let's get to it. And one thing that I threw here in the show notes, because I saw it in the last hour, kind of a, a just in today, right. there has been a person found dead in a conference room on Apple's Cupertino campus, according to reports. Uh, this is on Mashable. And I don't believe they've had any further updates. They said they've reached out to Apple and the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office for comment. And the officer who answered the phone referred to referred them to a spokesperson. And apparently that person has not returned the call. So, hmm. And I'm going to refresh this article just to make sure that nothing else has cropped up. But no. So far, nothing. So that's that's interesting and sad at at the uh, the same time. So yeah, you know maybe maybe there wasn't anything nefarious going on, and it was just one of those. You know, not that I want anybody to die, but right, I'd, I'd much rather someone have like a heart attack or or some kind of something happen than you know, someone being killed, murdered, poisoned, you know, that type of thing, especially <laughs> at Apple. It's like, yeah, natural causes is a lot better. Than yeah. Now, now we have to call in the detectives and find out why the person was murdered. <laughs> I mean, this, this is a bit too soon, but okay. Their numbers are down. <laughs> so 
that joke was wanting to come out of my face, and I wasn't brave enough to make it. <laughs> well, you know, I'm Honey Badger. I don't give up anyway. <laughs> All right, so, you know, mm-hmm. our thoughts to uh, whoever this is, their family, and, and of course, everyone at Apple, because, you know, something like this definitely uh, will we'll shake up and run through the entire um, body of people, you know, the workers and what have you, so. Mm-hmm. All right, so I believe you put this one in here about Nathan Fillion is joining the Guardians of the Galaxy as Wonder Man, who I have honestly never heard of. No godly idea. I actually meant to look him up on the Marvel Wiki before we did this, and I just now remembered I didn't do that. Um, But the point is, Nathan Fillion joining a Guardians of the Galaxy movie? Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's... that, that. that movie, um, weirdly enough, and I don't know how you feel about this, so you'll be able to give your opinion, but everyone says what their favorite Marvel Universe movies have been so far, right? And weirdly for me, it has not been the major hitters, I suppose you could say, that have been my favorites. My favorites have been Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant-Man. Those have been my two favorites out of the Marvel movies so far, and both of them arguably are comedies, right? Huh. Yeah, yeah, and I, w- I would agree with you. I have to say that I believe that I would rank Guardians of the Galaxy. If it's not my number one, it's definitely my number two. Now, I can't give that to Ant-Man, but mm-hmm. Ant-Man's Actually, probably in, it's in my yeah. top ten, let's put it that way. Okay, Had, did you not like Ant-Man that much? Or? No, I, I liked it, but when you compare it to... Iron Man 1 and 3, nobody talks about number 2. True. Um, and then Avengers, and, and even the second Avengers movie, The Age of Ultron. I would have to say that Ant-Man is kind of, I don't hmm. know. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out how I would rank them. I, I, let's, let's do this. I would give Guardians of the Galaxy number 1, uh, Iron Man 1, Probably number two, Iron Man three, number three, Avengers, number four, and it's almost a tie between the Age of Ultron and Ant Man. Okay. And I'm in. I, I know I forgot the Thor movies, but I'm not even. <laughs> I mean, I like them, but uh, the first one of the Thor movies was the best of those. So anyway, but yeah, I, it's not that I disliked Ant Man. It just mm, I don't know. You know, there was all kind of controversy surrounding that movie and and what it was intended to be originally and then how it changed. I'm looking forward to the second one because we're really going to explore. I mean, I think the actual title of it is Ant-Man and and the Wasp or something like that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, not to get derailed here. And of course, Ant-Man will be in the Civil War, so we'll see him before that. So. Oh yeah, along with Spider Man, the new Spider Man, the the yes. the new 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 Spider Man. <laughs> yes, but it's a Spider Man that Mark Spider Man. Listen to me, it's a Spider Man. Uh, <laughs> get me pictures of Spider Man right now. I want them right now. You understand me? Yeah, <laughs> he'll, he'll always be J Jonah Jameson to me. Um, but no, it's a Spider-Man that Marvel is actually in charge of, so that's what makes me giddy. It's like, it might be done right for once. Um, True. Not that, I, not that I didn't like the other ones, but yeah, there are teeny little bits. Um, but yeah, it's it's neat to see someone like Nathan Fillion coming in. And again, the, the people that um, are being drug into the Marvel universe. You know, they're they're popular actors and stuff like that. So it's it's not like, oh, they got Nathan Fillion. You know, it's he, he hits you as the sort of person that's down to earth and would totally, if you ask him to be in a Marvel movie, go, uh, yes. Or well, mess it, up. Yeah, <laughs> and what's interesting too is the fact that I mean he he kind of cross pollinates because he's done he's done several voices, one that I know right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Uh, for DC as uh, how J- how Jordan's Green Lantern, yeah, and several of those animated shorts. Well, they really weren't shorts; they were animated films, actually. Yeah. So it's it is kind of interesting for him to to actually be in the Marvel universe now. The curious thing, and of course, I clicked over to look at uh, comicbookresources.com. 
they don't know or we don't know yet if he is he simply just going to be in it in these movie posters or is he actually going to be acting in it, you know? Hmm. Interesting. Because the little bit of reading that I did on it, and that was basically from this website, was the fact that Wonder Man eventually just becomes an actor. Mm. And uh, his upbringing is very similar to Tony Stark's. So they don't like each other. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sort of digging into the Marvel wiki while we're talking, trying to find stuff on him. Yeah. So I, I uh, like I said, I didn't... The the amount of information I got was really from this comicbookresources.com, dot com, which was linked from the original article. Mm-hmm. Um, and because he plays Wonder Man is Simon Williams, and like from this one it says, in the photos, Fillion Simon Williams features on several movie posters as well as a theater marquee that announces a Simon Williams Film Festival. One of mm-hmm. the film posters touts Archon, who comic fans will also recognize as a classic Marvel character. Another appears to be a Tony Stark biopic with Williams posed in a Steve Jobs-esque way. Two ad- <laughs> yeah. Two additional posters pin him as the star of Haxon 2, which is likely a sequel to the original and real 1922 Swedish-Danish silent film and a romantic comedy titled Oh, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, according to the Marvel Wiki, they were he comes from a munitions family and stuff like that. So yeah, very similar to Tony Stark. So it makes sense. Yeah, and he gets his powers from Baron Zemo. Aha. Uh-huh. And eventually joins the Avengers as Wonder Man. <laughs> <laughs> he has superhuman strength, speed, stamina, and more. Mm. Would you like to know more? No, anyway. <laughs> that's uh that's wrong movie. I'm, I'm looking forward to I hope they give him more than just, a, oh, he's on movie posters. I hope he actually has an active role, even if it's just a, a few scenes. Just let him get into that because I have a sneaking suspicion that his, his days on Castle are coming quickly to an end, considering mm-hmm. that two of the stars, one of them a major star, Stana Kaddick, is no longer going to be there if there is a a season nine. Right. So um, it's not Castle unless you've got Casket, you know. <laughs> right, totally. So I would like to see him to to do more film endeavors because loved him in Firefly, loved him in Serenity. To me, Serenity was a was a good bookend to the, uh, the, the very short-lived Firefly series. I'd mm. love to see more... Uh, Firefly movies, yeah. But I, I just I don't think that's ever gonna ever gonna happen. Right? Yeah. We can hope. We can hope. Okay. Um. Now, I will preface this by saying that what I'm about to read, because it's best if I read this verbatim, because otherwise it's uh you, you lose the effect. But this is satire. And this is in this is in direct connection with the whole Utah pornography being a, a public health crisis type of thing. So it's sort it's sort of onion esque, I suppose. Is definitely the way of putting it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So anybody that happens to just come in and hear this right off, the, you know, in the middle of it, don't get your panties in a wide. This this is satire. <laughs> All right, so Iceland. I'm tempted. I'm tempted to put this on my Facebook page and see how many people that I'm <laughs> friends with actually get ticked off at it before I reveal that it's. But anyway, that's that's beside uh, the point. I wouldn't be that mean. <laughs> One of the other two of us here might be, but not me. <laughs> that is true. That would be a trap. Um, so Iceland declares Christianity a public health hazard. The island country of Iceland has officially declared Christianity a public health hazard. The law proclaiming the radical idea was signed recently by the prime minister, and I'm not even going to attempt his name. (laughs) In the spirit of, quote, protecting the elderly from scams, our children from nightmares, and the general population from chicanery. (laughs) As strong as the law's language is, it does not restrict the free exercise of religion by any citizen or visitor. A coalition of 
Lutherans, Catholics, and other Christian sects have formed an organization to combat the image that they contribute to the erosion of psychological well-being. Quote, yes, certain rogues have used Christianity to fleece the old and give hellish nightmares to the young, explained Reverend Andrew Kennard. However, faith requires the acknowledgement of not knowing, and we can all agree simplistic and often contradictory answers found in the Bible are the answers to not knowing. The new law urges Icelandic society to pick up a book and to engage fellow human beings in the spirit of compassion, regardless of creed. It also calls for research to determine the best path to promote humanistic values around the world. Pro-reason activists hail the recent events as a victory against superstition. Some local Catholics are calling the measure a witch hunt. Quote, a witch hunt is where a mob attacks the weakest members of society and prosecutes them typically via a sham trial. The mob then executes the poor soul. The last time I checked, the Catholic Church were the undisputed champions of the world in such games for centuries, stated an anonymous <laughs> citizen. <laughs> American Republic presidential hopefuls are calling the events transpiring in Iceland dangerous and wonder if such a brazen act of divine disobedience may mean that the country is not fit to be in NATO. Both Democratic candidates are afraid to point out that the predominantly Muslim country of Turkey is, well, a predominantly Muslim country because they would be branded as eggheads. <laughs> Icelandic public officials are calling for calm and rational thinking, but the religious are saying that's what caused the new law to be passed in the first place. <laughs> this story is a spoof of the BBC article, Utah Declares Porn a Public Health Hazard. <laughs> this was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Of course, this yeah. was over on Patheo, so there you go. <laughs> I first read this to my, to my wife, and she was like, it's... Good on them. And I said, now, you know what? You, you want to know what the kicker is? She said, it's a hoax. I said, it's satire. She goes, damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. So, SeaWorld. Fresh off the, the SeaWorld victory, animal rights groups take aim at zoos, circuses, and maybe even your pet. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a well-funded coalition of nonprofits that have finally broken SeaWorld. And this is when the theme park chain announced in March that it would phase out its popular killer whale program. And now the groups smell blood in the water and on the, the land. So Ashley Bryan, a campaign specialist at PETA, told FoxNews.com, quote, the tide is turning against SeaWorld and other aquariums and zoos. I think this is a sign of what's to come. SeaWorld Entertainment CEO Joel Manby, in an announcement signaling the end of its ORCA program, acknowledged the animal rights group's success in changing the public's perception about animals in captivity. Quote, society's attitude toward these very, very large majestic animals under human care has shifted for a variety of reasons, whether it's a film, legislation, or people's comments on the Internet. It just wasn't worth fighting that. We needed to move where society was moving. And a lot of this has to do with, and I have not seen this, but apparently there is a movie from 2013 called Blackfish, which is a critical documentary about the Orca Well program. Now, the interesting part of this is Jack Hanna, who is uh, the Into the Wild TV series and director emeritus of the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, mm -hmm. here's what he had to say about it. And this is the interesting part. He says, animal rights activists believe all animals, including your dog or cat, should have the same rights as people and be free. Therefore, they shouldn't be in human care under any circumstances that i don't i don't understand how that could even come about and mm -hmm. i brought this topic up around my household 
And of course, the first thing that anybody pointed out here was, have they ever heard of domestication? <laughs> because, you know, domesticated animals will not live very successfully on their own if you're like, okay, well, I'm, you're no longer in my care because I've got these bleeding hearts over here. And let me, let me clarify. Yes, I do believe that there is an issue when it comes to circus animals and animals mm-hmm. in captivity that are not treated the way they should be treated. Uh, right. you know. But it's like Jack Hanna here actually pointed out, there's very few, quote, wild areas left in the world that even in Africa, the wild places tend to be national parks that have guarded boundaries. So if they were successful in a year or two from now, it, it as radical as this sounds, were able to get laws passed that said, okay, you can no longer have animals in captivity even at your home, which means you can't keep them in your home. All your animals have to be outside and have to be allowed to run wild. If they didn't grandfather current domesticated animals and I had to throw my three cats out, they wouldn't survive. Mm. Yeah. You know, the cats already have outside are fine. They would look at their their brothers and sisters and go, who the hell are you? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And what are you doing on my lawn? (laughs) Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah, there's... So... That you're right. There is a problem with places that don't treat animals correctly, and that's not really what we're. It, well, we are kind of talking about that, but let let me tell you the one thing that will make a red flag in an article like this for me more than anyone out else, anything else, and it's one name, Peta. Mm-hmm. Anytime Peta is involved in something, I I immediately take it less seriously. I mean, uh, there. The, I love animals. I do, and I think they should be treated properly. I agree with that. But PETA usually does things the wrong way around. And there are other organizations like the ASPCA and stuff like that mm-hmm. that are fantastic. Yeah. And do things the right way. But PETA is a bunch of bat crap, crazy people that need to shut up. <laughs> I mean, I. I'm not going to sugarcoat this, okay? With a $37 million annual budget. I know. You give crazy people money, this is what happens. <laughs> hey, I, I can be crazy. Give me money. <laughs> yeah, I'll be crazy, too, if you give me money. But the point is, when, when you've even got people like Jack Hanna, and I consider Jack Hanna to be one of the good guys, yeah. one of the ones that really does care for animals so much, I mean, even the article says that he was part of a movement to make zoos more natural and stuff mm-hmm. like that instead of them being these sort of crap holes, right? as you could say. Um, so whenever Jack Hanna is even saying this is a bit extreme, then you know there's a problem here, right? Agreed. Uh, so it's, I mean, well, the animal rights movement has problems that happen all around the board. Um, I remember seeing this picture. I think it might have been a milk bar or something like that. You know how you have these kind of places that are like, well, we'll serve milk here instead of, you know, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. And there were protesters in front of it going, stop murder, stop murder. And the and the caption underneath was, when is someone going to tell these people that you don't have to kill a cow to get the milk <laughs> from it? <laughs> You got to kill it to get a good steak, but <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Which I have no problem with. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, mm, yeah. I had, I had a, there's, there's some in the fridge. <laughs> um, there you go. But, but yeah, it's just, I, just anytime Peta gets involved in something, I just immediately go, "What have they done this time?" They're mm-hmm. like that crazy neighbor you have that you have to deal with their crap every now and then. <laughs> And then otherwise, they're just quiet. And, but then they sometimes have their crazy night. And you just go, okay, fine. <laughs> Had your time. Now go back into your house and be, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's that's the only metaphor I can come up with for what PETA is. I, I'm all for animals getting proper treatment, but PETA just doesn't do it right. I agree. Yeah, there's $37 million annual budget. That is that's a lot of money uh, for the craziness that they that they do. Mm. And and I agree with you. There are other organizations out there that 
are, are doing the right thing and are, are more appropriate than, than PETA. Um, last month, according to this article, the Connecticut-based Friends of Animals sued zoos in Texas, Kansas, and Nebraska regarding 17 elephants that arrived by plane from the African country of, of Swaziland, Swaziland and were mm-hmm. destined for zoos around the country. So the charity initially demanded the elephants be flown back to Africa, saying that captivity, no matter the conditions, was detrimental. But yet I'm pretty sure these elephants came from a, a national park somewhere <laughs> in Africa. They finally backed down, though. You know, sometimes, it's like we said, um, let's treat animals with dignity and, and respect, okay? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the reason why you, you have these you have these poor, these commercials with music by Sarah uh, McLaughlin. McLaughlin, <laughs> You know, will, will make, make you start shedding a tear. And they know how to tug at people's heartstrings. Mm. But, with all that said, let me just clarify something. Humankind is at the top of the food chain on this planet right now. Okay? And no, I'm not suggesting that we eat dogs and cats. That's not what I'm <laughs> saying. But I'm saying that at no point do I believe that an animal's right should trump a human's right. Mm. Now, I do believe that that animals should have rights. They should not. Uh, uh, they should not be mistreated. Right. Uh, if if you're going to be responsible for an animal, I mean, w- my family, we are responsible for the animals that we have, the ones we have indoors and the ones that we have outdoors. Mm-hmm. We make sure that they have adequate food. We make sure that they have a proper place to use the bathroom. Much to the chagrin of my grown-up kids who have, well, basically, yeah, they have poop duty. (laughs) They alternate, you know. Mm. So I agree with that. Uh, But I think what happens is with groups like PETA, they would rather animals have more rights and higher rights than humans do. And, And I just, I'm sorry, that's not the way it goes. It's just like I'll never understand vegetarians and vegans. Mm. You know, we we have the teeth that we have to be able to tear into flesh. Ergo, yeah. we are meat eaters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but the 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 sticking point here was the fact that Jack Hanna was even warning that if this craziness continues, they this these groups may even be coming after your own animals in your own own home, mm-hmm. and. You know what? We all we already have enough trouble with the government want, wanting to tell you what you can and cannot do in your own bedroom. Right. You know, if you stick the wrong appendage in the wrong place, that <laughs> that might be considered illegal. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't need groups coming in telling me that uh what what I need to do with my animals as long as as long as they're healthy, happy, they're fed um and uh that that's pretty much it. Then it's nobody's business. Right. Totally. So speaking of dogs, and this one was actually, I believe, shared with us by the producer. And I guess this one just kind of uh, went by me. I didn't realize that there was a 7.8 magnitude earthquake in Ecuador last week. Mm -hmm. But there was 7.8 magnitude. So um, there is a four-year-old white Labrador called Daco. I guess that's how you pronounce it, D-A-Y-K-O. And this dog is being held as a hero after um, he rescued seven people from the aftermath of the Ecuador earthquake. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the very next day, he died from exhaustion. I guess it's the next day. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, he's a rescue dog for the Ibarra Fire Service, and he died Friday. And... uh, having spent the previous day searching for survivors. And according to a post on the Ibarra Ibarra Fire Services Facebook page, the cause of death was massive coronary uh, myocardial infarction and acute respiratory failure. Now, 
not not to make light of this, but I've always had trouble with the word infarction because mm-hmm. it sounds too funny. Right. <laughs> but basically, he had a heart attack and died of respiratory failure. Yeah. Uh, he's been working f- as a rescue dog for three and a half years. So the fire service uh, stated, <clears throat> we regret to inform you that today the fire service is in mourning because we just lost Daco, who participated in the work of searching in per- Perdinalis. I guess is how yeah. you say Close that. Close enough. Close enough. You held, uh, you held the high name of the K-9 unit. Mm. So a little bit about this earthquake. More than 2,000 people were injured in the quake. It happened on April the 16th. It ripped apart buildings and roads and knocked out power along the Pacific coastline. At least 654 people have been killed. And the president of uh, Ecuador said reconstruction will cost billions of dollars with a B, and the impact on economic growth could be huge. (laughs) Sorry. You had to. I had to. <laughs> it's not funny. I mean, I, mm. I really feel bad when when stuff like, like this happens. I mean, oh yeah. L- you know, look at what happened to Haiti years and years ago, and I don't think they've ever fully recovered. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it'd be like if something like that happened here in California, fell off into the ocean. Number one, I'd be highly upset because my son is there, um, first and foremost. Right. But it would, uh, and, and I feel very, very bad for anybody that lost their lives in something like that, but yeah. it would have a detrimental economic impact on the rest of the country. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we're talking just one state in the United <laughs> States, not not the, <laughs> the entirety of Ecuador. Right. <sighs> All right. Let's go from sad to sadder. Apple's nine-year iPhone juggernaut stops with the first sales decline. Oh, no, it's the end of the world. Oh, rest in peace, Apple. They're going to go bankrupt. No, it's time. (laughs) Okay, so I meant to do this before the show. Um, I believe the last number that I heard is around $232 billion in cash that Apple currently has in the bank. So, even... <laughs> you start off with like that. $232 billion in cash. They could actually buy Caterpillar if they wanted mm-hmm. to. Uh, easily. And the reason why I bring that up is because they had their, they, they had their uh, earnings call. And they did have the very first revenue drop in 13 years, which actually was kind of expected. And of course, you know, something like this happens, their shares fail, they dropped by 8%, went below $100 for the first time since February. Um, And uh, apparently they weren't the only ones that saw some disappointing quarterly reports. Microsoft, uh, Google's owner Alphabet, Twitter, they all had uh, results that, that missed expectations. But Apple said it sold 51.2 million iPhones in its second fiscal quarter, which is down from 61.2 million in the same quarter a year ago. But it was actually above the analyst estimates of about 50 million devices. Apple had actually predicted that their iPhone sales would decline this quarter. But... Um, I mean, what do you expect? I mean, the as far as I'm concerned, and we've talked about this before, the smartphone mm-hmm. market is saturated. Yeah, and it's hitting a creative brick wall at the same time. There's not much you can do now. You've yeah. done it all. Yeah. I mean, even Apple Chief Financial Officer Luca Maestri told Reuters that the success of the iPhone 6 a year earlier had set a difficult bar to beat in the second quarter. The iPhone 6 is an anomaly. Mm. But Tim Cook, who, of course, is the CEO, told analysts that the smartphone market was not growing, reinforcing wider concerns of saturation. He conceded that the iPhone 6S was driving customers to replace phones at a much lower rate than the 6. Quote, I don't mean just a hair lower. It's a lot lower. 
If we'd had the same rate on the 6S as the 6, it would be time for a huge party. Hmm. He's pointed to other service divisions, which include Apple Music and the Apple Store, as a bright spot. Its revenue grew 20% to $6 billion and actually surpassed iMac and iPad sales. He, he did hint, however, that they had more gadgets to come. He said the future of Apple is very bright, and our product pipeline has amazing innovations in store. Um, let's see. I was trying to get to that thing. I was talking about how much their revenue, their, their market cap actually had fallen uh, like 40-something billion dollars, which was the equivalent of the entire market cap of Caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, you know, they, they did release the iPhone SE, which is the four-inch screen, and uh, they said the sales of the phone were not captured in the second quarter. It's apparently off to a very strong start. Their revenue in greater China, however, fell 26% from a year ago. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that you've got strong competition in China. you got Samsung. You've got uh, that one that we had to look up to pronounce. <laughs> Xiaomi you know, or... Xiaomi or Yahweh or Huawei or... <laughs> All right. I've, I've got a how to pronounce... Yes. I'm going to go right back to the place where I was before. <laughs> and it is pronounced Huawei. Huawei. Yeah. Right. I think that's the reason why they're they're losing their market share and their their uh sales are dropping such uh a considerable amount in China is because of all the the various Chinese companies that are actually saturating the market over there. Yeah. And a lot cheaper phones too. Probably mm -hmm. cheaper production, cheap cheaper quality as well as cheaper money. But then again, cheaper money, yeah. Um, yeah. here's some cheap money, <laughs> make it rain. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you look at it from a market perspective of, okay, we can make a $150 phone that people are going to replace in two years anyway, uh, versus a $650 phone, which they may not replace because of the cost. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's just about volume. Right, And I can't say for certainty that's what's happening. It's just I've read some things about that, that that could be part of what's happening over in China. But, you know, I think the reports of, of Apple's demise are a bit too soon. With $232 billion in the bank, I don't think they'd ever have to make another, they, they'd never have to post another profit as long as they don't have severe losses and probably still be going for another 10 or 15 years. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, okay, so we don't have to worry about Apple, at least not for 2016. Might have to worry about them in 2017, but not in 2016. Yes, we won't be having to find an iPad Air to the throne anytime soon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, the hits keep on coming. Now we've got Mitsubishi, who is now coming out <laughs> and saying that, oh, yeah, by the way, we've cheated on our uh, our uh, fuel efficiency test for the past 25 years. You know, this it was... after BMW, wasn't it? The no, ones Volkswagen. After... Volkswagen, okay, yeah. 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 So investors responded to this new news by pushing Mitsubishi shares down by 10%. <laughs> appropriately <laughs> it says the fuel test scandal has now erased half of the company's market value and its shares are sitting in a record low it's time to buy <laughs> it's time to buy buy low sell high sheesh well what i found interesting in this article is not only did it bring to light i mean the, the core focus of the article was mitsubishi Apparently, they'd actually said, yeah, we've been falsifying these for X number of years. And then it was like, well, actually, it's been 25 years. Mm. Uh, Japanese authorities raided Mitsubishi's offices last week. Uh, the automaker won't include an earnings forecast when it announces results on Wednesday because of uncertainty over the scandal's impact. Yeah. 
You know, like we mentioned, Volkswagen has already had their big one last year. Other automakers have been penalized in recent years. This is what I thought was interesting. Hyundai and Kia agreed to pay a combined $100 million fine in the U.S. in 2014. That one got past me. I didn't know about that one. Me neither. Also, in 2014, Ford said it would compensate owners of about 200,000 U.S. vehicles after discovering cars' gas mileage was overstated. Mm. Didn't know about that one either. Nah. Some some of this stuff just zips past us at times. Yeah, and I try to stay stay up on this stuff, but there's just so much going on here lately. It's you just you can either spend your time sitting in front of the computer, reading all the various websites, listening to the radio, watching television, and trying to keep up with everything, or you can actually have a life. You can't have mm. both. Yeah, totally. I'm actually fiddling around with the Audible app a bit. It's got channels in it, yeah. if you've got an account. So some of those are news channels, so I'm going to see how that works out for me, keeping attention to stuff, because you can listen to stuff while doing other things. Ah, so Yeah, that's what's so great about audio podcasts. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, now this one's somewhat interesting, and, and I'll explain the connection to Castle. Mm. <laughs> it's a loose connection, but a uh, German nuclear plant has been infected with computer viruses, or the operator of the plant is saying. Um, so basically, you got a power plant in Germany that has been found to be infected with computer viruses, but they don't appear to pose a threat to the facility's operations because it's isolated from the internet. So you have to go isolated from the internet, well then, how did it get the uh, computer viruses? Aha! I'd like (laughs) to go back to a couple episodes where we talked about social engineering (laughs) and thumb drives. (laughs) So anyway, this, uh, and this is where we we need our our local German here, but I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. It's G-U-N-D-R-E-M-M-I-N-G-E-N. Gunderman. Yeah, I'd Possibly. go for it. I don't. <laughs> anyway, the plant's located 75 miles northwest of Munich and is run by the German utility RWE. Viruses that were found were the W32. Ramnet and the Con- Conficker virus. Uh, where they were discovered at the B unit in a computer system retrofitted in 2008 with data visualization software which was associated with equipment for moving nuclear fuel rods. It was, uh, malware was also found on 18 removable data drives, mainly USB sticks in office computers maintained separately from the plant's operating systems. Uh, RWE has said that it had increased cybersecurity measures as a result. I would hope so. (laughs) uh, Yeah. So the W32.ramnet virus is designed to steal files from infected computers and targets Microsoft Windows software, according to security firm Symantec. So it was first discovered in 2010. It's distributed through data sticks, among other methods. I like data sticks. I've never heard it called <laughs> that. It thumb drives. Yeah. Data sticks. Um, and is intended to give an attacker remote control over a system which is connected to the Internet. The Conficker virus has infected millions of Windows computers worldwide since it came to light in 2008. It's able to spread through networks and copying itself onto removable data drives. The thing that I wanted to... uh, We watched an episode of Castle. It was actually from last week. Mm. And what was interesting about it, and uh, anyone who hasn't watched Castle in the last two weeks, close your ears, (laughs) because I'm about to give you the plot. So there's this character named Haley who is a former MI6 operative, and she's working with Rick Castle in his PI business. Well, an old friend of hers that used to run her <clears throat> used to run her group came asking for a favor. Uh, a little bit off the books, of course, and it to, was to go into this uh, energy company's headquarters under the guise of they were hired by the wife of the CEO because she thought the CEO was cheating on her. Hmm. 
So Haley was supposed to get in, put this thumb drive into the computer. It was going to upload a, a basically a virus so that it could keep tabs on the guy. Come to find out what it actually did was the virus, up, once uploaded into the system, and unbeknownst to another person, another employee who was also drug into this, he inadvertently opened up a, a, a doorway into their secured servers. So then the virus went into the secured servers and then shut down the entire power grid for London for a little over 24 hours. <laughs> so that's the reason why I said it was a loose connection because the whole thumb drive, viruses, social engineering. I mean, yeah. she was social engineered by a friend of hers who she come to, finds out later was coerced into doing it, and then he eventually mm. was killed. And Anyway, long story there. I mean, it was a good episode because they made it look like, for all practical purposes, that she was the perpetrator of this because she actually had a hand in writing the original virus mm -hmm. uh, because it, it was designed for something else. It was part of Stuxnet, and, yeah. and that's how this all tied together. So anyway. Nice. Yeah. So uh, in 2013, a computer virus attacked a turbine control system at a U.S. power company after a technician inserted an infected USB computer drive into the network. It kept the plant offline for three weeks. Hmm. And, of course, we had Japan's Fukushima nuclear disaster five years ago. So, of course, there's concern in Germany over the safety of nuclear power triggered a uh, decision by the government to speed up the shutdown of nuclear plants. That's one of the things they're doing. They're, I forget exactly by the, what the deadline is, and I think it's ridiculous for them to do this because, in my opinion, nuclear power is one of the most efficient and safest forms of power that doesn't – I mean, granted, you, we, we got the spent fuel rods situation, but – we're not throwing toxic fumes in the air like we do with coal plants and things like that. But yet Germany is shutting down all of their nuclear power plants. Mm. I, I think they're idiots for doing that, but that's, mm. that's just me. Right. So anyway, there you have it. Once again, social engineering. Ooh, a thumb drive. I wonder what's on this. Click. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Why did you have to even include this last one? <laughs> because we were looking for examples of what we were talking about last week, and I found one. <clears throat> yeah, but I think you, you pointed out this one. This article is actually somewhat slanted. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, it, it totally is. So we got a man arrested for peeping on women in a changing room in Target of all places. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. So the dude's 26 years old. This is in Missouri. Mm. And he actually, I mean, I love this. The peeping Tom was dressed as a man and did not once claim to be transgender. <laughs> so, yeah, the statement, we thought only men in wigs and dresses sexually assaulted men. That's what Republicans have been teaching us anyway. Yeah, this is... This is apparently a logo-owned media company, if that gives you some idea, the specific slant which is taken by this. Yeah. Um, I, I have varied Facebook friends. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, so where I get news stories may be interesting. <laughs> hey, you know, the more the merrier. Mm. So the guy faces felony invasion of privacy charges and unlawful possession of a firearm because, of course, you know, he had to be armed. Oh, yeah. He was arrested by police in Brentwood on April 23rd after a female shopper trying on a bathing suit noticed him holding a camera phone under the wall of her dressing room. Wow, the balls on that dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, I have to bring up, you know, ironically, Target recently announced his policy to allow customers and employees to use whichever bathroom corresponds to their gender identity. Mm-hmm. But this is not the first time this guy's been charged with something like this. In 2013, he was uh, convicted for filming an 11-year-old changing in a department store dressing room. He served mm. one year. Yeah. One year. One year for that. Talk about the punishment not fitting the crime. 
Yeah. This guy should have at least gotten five, if not more years for something like that. I mean, I don't know how he survived being in prison for true. something like that. Anyway, usually your life expectancy, if you do anything to a child, is significantly shorter than most people's life expectancies. Yeah. I mean, I guess filming an 11 year old is not quite the same as physically touching and molesting one, but it's sure. damn close. Oh, yeah. And I'm I'm with you. I'm surprised that he even made it a year. I mean, mm-hmm. I guess he had maybe he got he was at Club Med or something. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah. Oh man, and it's one thing, and and of course, I'm not condoning what he did mm-hmm. recently, but it's one thing to record someone over the eighteen age of eighteen, but when you're trying to record an eleven year old changing in a department store. My knee-jerk reaction, especially if it had been my daughter, is I'll save the taxpayer some money. (laughs) (laughs) He might not be the only one armed. Mm. (sighs) Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. You know, this morning, yesterday was uh, primaries in five states, Mm. and Bernie Sanders only won one of them. Yep. Which is sad. Very Mm. sad. Because we are quickly approaching where we're going to be faced with a Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton general election. Mm. And I don't want either one of them. <laughs> I, I, I'm not shy enough to say in public. No, me neither, really. I, just... <laughs> I don't want either one of them. I um, usually shy from political statements, but I think this is one I can make and not many people will try to beat me up over it. So, I mean... If I'm allowed, which I don't think we can here in Georgia with these these electronic voting machines, I would write Bernie Sanders' name in on the general election. Mm-hmm. I, I won't choose Hillary. I won't choose the Donald. I would write in Bernie Sanders. I mean, right. hell, I'd write myself in before I would vote for Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. And this is if Donald Trump actually gets it. You know this is probably going to be contested at this point, right? They're going to try all they can do to try to make it not happen. If he can get the, what is it, 1232, 1237, whatever it is. Something like that. He won all five states yesterday. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's he's a juggernaut that just, I mean, <laughs> it reminds me of that line from one of the X-Men movies, you know. <laughs> I'm the juggernaut, bitch. That's exactly <laughs> what I see Donald Trump. I mean, he's just. He's got the helmet on, and he's he's barreling down the road, not looking where he's going, and nobody can seem to stop him, mm. you know. And I, I think it's Cruz and Kasich have actually bonded or uh, banded together to try to fight him. I don't know what they're planning on doing here. I don't. Yeah, know that... apparently they're making some sort of plan where in certain states one of them is going to back out and let the other one try or something like that. I don't. <laughs> it's a recipe for disaster. This is the I. I seriously think that the reason why he has gotten this far is because there were so many people gunning for that position to begin with that it split the vote so much Yeah, that he was able to get in, and now they're in trouble. Oh. I, no, I, it's, I, it's not like if it wasn't him that I would be pretty much impressed with anyone else either this was this was just a year where nobody really impressed me that much some got my attention a little bit but no one really umphed me you know well sense unless something changes and there has to be a significant change i there 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 are no republican candidates now or in the foreseeable future that i would ever vote for Mm. Um, I don't like the Democratic candidates, and Bernie Sanders is independent. He just happens to be running on the Democratic ticket. Right. Because he knew that that was where he had his best shot. Yeah. Um, And it really really hurts my heart to think that we're getting to the point where he may not be able to pull this out. And I was really, really hoping, because Hillary Clinton scares the hell out of me. (laughs) I mean, she really does. But... N- nothing scares me more than Donald Trump. Mm. So, of course, we could get lucky. He gets in, he's president, and Congress basically blocks him every step of the way. Mm-hmm. So we have four years of nothing. Right. 
which has been pretty much what we've had the last four years. Anyway. I, I mean, and I will make a statement that is quite bizarre here, but someone needed to mix this crap up. Let's be honest. True. And he came along and mixed this crap up. I mean, it's something that will probably change the political landscape of this country in the future. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it it should definitely make the Republican Party think. Mm. To have someone like him come in, run as a Republican, and basically just gut the party the way he's done. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're going to have to regroup. And maybe, just maybe, when they rebuild, there will actually be a better party. I doubt it. But uh, because I've I found you know, over the years as I've gotten older, I no longer uh, align myself with the Republican viewpoint on a lot of things. Mm. And uh, I'm I'm more... I'm definitely more on Bernie's side. There's no doubt about that. Um, yeah. And there's aspects of that that are, are from the Democratic side of it, too. But, you know, universal health care, I'm, I'm all for that. Um, you know, wage equality, we need – if we if we can't get a, a basic income, then let's, let's drive that minimum wage up to at least $12 an hour. Do I agree that fast food workers should get $15 an hour? No, I do not. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it should there. And the reason the only reason why we've even gotten into the whole fifteen dollar an hour at fast food restaurants is the fact that if you go back into the 80s and even the 90s, fast food restaurants. That was the, the safe haven for teenagers in high school to make a little extra money, get their first jobs and things like that. Those yep. jobs were never designed to be full time employment. Being a breadwinner for a household. Oh, yeah, I work at McDonald's. No, those are all supposed to be part-time jobs. Yeah. But unfortunately, with the state of the economy and the haphazard way that we attempted to get to universal health care has basically created us an an economic environment where the only damn things available are part-time jobs, even for people my age, you know, in the mid-40s. And, of course, they're going, I need more money. Because I'm only getting 18 hours, I'm getting 18 hours a week at eight dollars an hour for McDonald's, and then I'm getting another 18 hours a week from some other part-time job where I'm making 7.45 or eight dollars an hour. Yeah, I understand that. So mm-hmm. there's a there's a bigger cause to the symptoms that we're seeing, and to me, and I'll get off this high horse. That's where the basic <laughs> basic income comes in. So anyway, right. All right. Well, I guess that's going to wrap up uh, this episode. Uh, Sam, you got anything to to plug? Where can you be found? What you're working on? That kind of stuff. Well, you can find all of my stuff at tscn.tv. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I just did my Hearthstone pack open for Whispers of the Old Gods. So that's if that's something you want to look into and see how my luck went with that whole thing, you can find that at tscn.tv slash play. And otherwise, you can find all of my social media links at about not me slash lab tag seven. Very good. And everything I'm working on is over at slant.fm and all my social media stuff is at about.me slash GD Adkisson. Now, if you have any feedback, the email address is feedback at slant.fm. And if you want to leave a voicemail, the number is 313-718-2557. And yes, that is a different number than the live call-in number. Remember, we record this show live each Monday and Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday for another episode of Watts. Take care. Bye-bye.
This show is a production of the Slant FM Digital Network. Find more at slant.fm.